advertising. <laughs> oh shit, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing out there? This is Intergalactic Interviews, and this is episode 147. How you doing, folks? Did you have a fantastic week? I had a medium week, but today has immediately picked up. Oh my goodness, I'm having such a good time. And I'm super charged up right now because I just came from a cryo tank for the very first time. This was my first time experiencing cryotherapy here at Float House. And who else better to be in the house to talk about such wonderful facilities other than the fantastic, the wonderful, the talented Mr. Mike Zaremba. How you doing, sir? I am excellent. Very happy yes. to be here. The Thanks tribe. for having me back. The tribe is here. I, I'm so excited. Every time I get to point to this wonderful sign behind me that we don't Woo-hoo. have on camera, but Vancouver Real. Yeah. Uh, how's it going? Podcast host, content yeah. creator, owner, operator, meditation, mm-hmm. master, master? Can I say master? Yeah. Master? No, man. Learner. Learner. Student. <laughs> Practitioner. <laughs> Practitioner. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering how far I could push no. the compliments until you're like, wait a minute. No, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> stop. You just came from the tank, though. I did. Yeah. I just had a nice float. Our energies are interweaving it's like the yin and the yang that's man. definitely it you're that's super it. relaxed and chill right now Very calm and i'm i'm so charged up that was my first time in the cryo cool it is really cool it's it really is very cool. cool i mean literally yeah like <laughs> hundred and nice. punny as fuck what is it negative 146 degrees celsius they drop you to 165 yeah i think it's a range Holy shit. yeah yeah it's, it's yeah within 145 to 165 right, right. um but that facility and mm-hmm. it's uh and its use is like a brand new component uh, here at the float house yeah. uh, in, in Gastown, the Gastown yeah. float house. Uh, do any other locations have the cryo tank at this moment? No, no. And cryo is something that's kind of scarce and hard to come by. Vancouver Pretty Cryotherapy scarce. is who we partnered with. Uh, Jay's the owner. Shout really out to cool Jay. Guy. Yep. Love that Super guy, cool man. guy. We watched and jujitsu the- videos last week for a little bit. Oh, was, together? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. He was like, <laughs> he was like, have you seen this one? I was like, I was like, put on some ADCC 2012. <laughs> He's like, all right, let's do it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So you know, he he blends very well in with the float the float community here, He's the float tribe. Guy. Yeah. And um, but no, we partnered with him. He got it. We brought. We basically changed one of the rooms from a float room into the cryo <clears> room, and and uh, he's been rocking it since um, since the beginning of August. It totally fits. It yeah. so fits the whole well being, the the mindfulness. Mm-hmm. It's so amazing. I was really surprised at how uh, how it. I mean, you think it's going to be like like freezing cold? It's, right. it's actually very tolerable. It's yes. Very, yeah. You're you're yes. so good with it, and uh, I don't know. I I totally recommend it right now. I feel like charged up. Yeah. Super tingly. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, like you cover like you know the the important sensitive parts of your body. <laughs> Like your hands and your feet and your, you know, Areas. midsection. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, uh, and the rest is bare, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, and then you're just kind of blasted with super cold uh, nitrogen. Yeah. And, and. But it's dry. It's dry. It's yes. super dry. So you can really describe cool. like you're in a circular sphere, almost like Luke Skywalker descending That's into, exactly or, sorry, it. Han Solo into the thing. It's much tighter though. Jay did yeah. joke that he's like, most people think it's like carbonite for you. <laughs> yeah. right. It's not. It's not like carbonite. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like yeah. carbonite. He's like, you're not Han Solo in there. And I was like, damn. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping for it. Yeah. But to make things even more crazy nerd, I actually decided to speak about Mr. Freeze while we were in there. Mm, I was oh, like, yeah. do you know the back origin story of Mr. Freeze? And I got really into it. He should know. He did know, actually. Yeah. I'm sure oh, he did know. He did, yeah. of course. He was like, his wife's name's Nora. I'm like, wow excellent <laughs> excellent smart dude yeah he, good man at trivia probably yeah amazing credibility you have to also imagine he probably hears every oh yeah, dumb, oh, yeah. every cold joke yeah, in the book every dumb <laughs> <laughs> yeah you have a cool job oh fuck yeah <laughs> just the lowest that, he would never cool that's annoying yeah that was the first that was an original one he's like oh i've never heard that i'm like it's fine yeah uh let me ask you this, bro. Mm. Uh, a lot of stuff going on right now. Mm-hmm. You're about to become a dad. Yes. Oh, wow. Excited? Congratulations. I am very excited. We were I'm talking on the excited. phone. I was I was pretty uh, stoked for you. I yeah. No, I'm pumped, man. I'm 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 trying to like curb it back because obviously my my partner has to go through a little bit of an event called a birth before we have a child. <laughs> I heard it's fine. Pretty yeah, yeah straightforward, right. you know. And so I'm like, like I, I go, I'm, like, I'm really really excited, and she's like. I'm, I'm like, are you? She's like, I'm kind of excited, but you know, she's got, she's got quite the journey ahead of her. Yeah. So I think it's like, uh, yeah, little curbed at this point for her, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm pumped though. There's a, there's an involvement 
as the male where you want to be involved in everything. Right. But you're like, you basically just got to hurry up and wait. Yeah. Essentially, right? You mean like during the actual birthing process? Well, I mean, especially these last few weeks going into it, right? Yeah. There, I, I mean, my brother just had a baby. And uh, like my brother, speaking with my brother-in-law, who's had uh, three three children with my sister, just hearing their process, right. every time you go, you go through it, it's just like, I mean, I don't have kids. I have no idea. Um, I've never experienced that situation. But I would imagine coming into the end zone like this, you've got to be like... Oh, yeah. it's, it's it must be a trip. The whole thing's a trip. And we've decided to not know the the gender no. or the date with the sex. That's like fun. It's, Should it's we just, predict it right now? Oh, it's 50-50, right? Have you predicted it on your show? Uh, no, no. Okay, let's predict this right now. What do you... Should I... Let's find out what Mike thinks. Yeah, what do you think it's going to... What do you think your child's sex is going to be? I think it's going to be a boy. All right. I was going to bet boy, too. Yeah. I'm going to go with boy. I think it's going to be a boy, and it'll be... A handsome boy. How about that? Oh, yeah. If I'm lucky, if I'm blessed by the gods, yeah. you know, <laughs> may your child be a handsome child. Yes, yeah. yes, with many wives. Yes, I think uh, <laughs> right into polygamy. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> oh wow. Wow. It's a real birth. strange Culture society. is going to change here. In yeah, North America. Exactly. Yeah. You watch. It's big time. The next gen's got a lot of things on their plate. They're going to take care of. Oh it. man, they got. Yeah. I mean, like we we we've done okay, but you know we've made a lot of mistakes too. And they're probably like, why are you guys taking so long with the improvements <laughs> that you know you have to make? We're like, because we got bad habits. Maybe the Rock will come fix everything in 2020. Oh, he will. He's going to step right in. He's going to run with who would it be his best uh, co-ticket? Triple H. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hard no, all that's a hard the, no. Yeah. Uh, when you said that, I thought I was thinking triple X. I'm, oh. thinking, I'm like Vin Diesel. Oh, no. yeah. He pulls up Vin Diesel. <laughs> he'd have to yell down Half the mountain. Size. Yeah, he'd have to yell way down the mountain at this year to like get it. You'd be like, "Hey, Vin, are you doing anything?" <laughs> like yelling at him. Uh, probably like I don't know. I've heard people say like Oprah. Really? What do you think of Oprah being his uh, VP? Oh yeah, Rock and Oprah, or vice versa. I was going to say, Rock. Oprah could yeah, probably have Oprah's her own little, ticket. Yeah, she's Oprah, probably yeah, got a little bit more sway. Right, her own. Oprah uh, could be good. Oprah could be good. She's Because she's open to, like, science, I we, think. Well, you got to think, why don't people like Oprah at that, like, elite wealth level? Why don't they do that? Because until this fucking last election, <laughs> it was assumed <laughs> that you at least had to... <laughs> Like, tr- pretend to be a public servant beforehand. <clears throat> Political experience, yeah. I guess. But I don't know, man. I, now it's open. But, I mean, I, that's... I don't know if you want to get into those inner circles, man. I think they'd it's be... It's pretty dark. Yeah, I don't think you'd want to know everything that's going on <laughs> there necessarily. Well, what, do you, what kind of stuff do you think Oprah knows, though? What, Oprah knows? When you hit the billionaire club, they, oh. they send you a letter. A golden I don't letter. I don't it's, know, man. They but send you a letter. Basically, she knows she can have her own TV channel and be on the cover of her magazine every single issue. Yeah. Like, and think that's about what she that. does. I have a, I have it's a, a magazine. powerful move. I have a magazine, and it's named after the first letter in my name. Yeah. You're like, you're like yeah. what? Yeah. Like, in fact, her name is so unique. Have you ever seen another Oprah? No. I've never even heard I've of never I'm sure this. I'm sure, I wonder if there are children being named Oprah now in the U.S. Like next gen. Like Oprah, yeah. save, Oprah gave us a house. Right. And so I named our third daughter after Oprah. Right. Things like that. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's it's okay. Then she starts becoming into like, like a deity status. Oh, yeah. She's massive. There, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. She's pretty much there. But, Iconic. Okay. Who gave her the, uh, like when she says, I want to have my own television station, mm. who uh, carved a place for her though? Because that's the power. That's the real power. Wow. She has her own network though. Yeah. Like that network though. But like someone had to right. launch you... a satellite or something. Right. You know what I mean? She probably launched her own <laughs> oh satellite. Oh my God. She has satellite power. Probably. Like, is that how it works? Is that, if you have a network, is that how they like broadcast? I'm pretty sure. You can kind of like move on to other people like other people's <laughs> networks you know what i mean like like right. whoever the whoever owns like NBC yeah the network i don't think you need uh but yeah how do you get like a you kind channel of, how do you get a channel i don't know like see this is how dumb i am i think you'd have to call like nasa or something you'd be like listen nasa i don't think you have to call NASA. i need a s- satellite well you know what it is it's probably like you know things like telus and shaw have like their their distribution and then you can you buy like a channel from them or something you pay them to be having that's what i'm saying yeah yeah so you have a channel and you negotiate rights within different territories yeah that's a big endeavor oh it's massive but that's huge when you have infinite amount of money more or less you can do really you can make anything happen that's crazy like anything that you want on like this physical realm of influence you can do it 
How old is Oprah now? Do you know how old she's she like is? the age of my mom? She's like sixty-ish, sixty-three, yeah, sixty-three, yeah, sixty-three. She has many, 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 many years left on this planet. Yeah. She and she, and she has like billion dollar health. Like she'll she'll be she'll outlive us all. She'll, she'll live very long, <laughs> very long. She'll yes. be the first one to switch over to pure cyborg, <laughs> without a doubt. As soon as they offer it, she'll be like, "Yeah, absolutely." I don't know. She's she's pretty like. I could see her remaining an orgy, you know, organic, <laughs> just because. Is that a little slang term? A little, yeah, little orgy. Or, yeah, stay in the orgy. I'm, I'm going to be an orgy, man. I, I don't want to go. I don't go mechanical. Yeah, you can't go know. mech. Are you going to go mechanical? Might go mech. Mech, half mech? Half mech. I'll go half mech. Which parts? If. Oh, that was a cool walk by that guy. I don't know if the mics picked that up. But... <laughs> they definitely did a little bit, yeah. Uh, that was loud for it, it to come through into here. Yeah. Uh what parts would I go mech? Yeah. I'd, I'd probably, I'd do something practical first. I'd start with thumbs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you right? Really? Well, you want grip. You Why want not to, the whole, not the whole hand. Let me just, just tell you single this. Digit? If you just go immediately from orgy hand to <laughs> cyborg hand, you won't have the control to ever do anything proper. Oh, what do you, do you think it's going to be like, our technology is dope now. You know? Like, <laughs> Like they do, they have retinal scan on the phone and all that stuff now, and face recognition. Like they're they're very sophisticated sensors now. They like sit you down on the in the doctor's office. It's not going to be like this Iron Age, yeah. just that's open I, or yeah. close. Well, well, I'd start with a thumb, and then maybe work, mm. and then my pinky. It probably wouldn't even look any different. They can probably make like this the rubberized skin, like Luke. Oh yeah, like Luke Skywalker. Yeah. What? This is another Star Wars reference. Yeah. Yeah. When they're testing it and he's in the medical bay and he has his wrist open right. and they're like tapping the uh, the sensors. Yeah, yeah. Like that always um, looked painful to me, to be honest. Yeah, it didn't look fun. But he actually, he does react pretty yeah, painfully, he doesn't he? he? Goes like, oh, yeah, he grimaces. He's like, oh. It's probably like a stinging, I imagine, yeah. by his That's face. It's like, a yeah. it's like, oh, it's a little stinging. I guess you're probably just glad to have your hand back. Yeah, it's... Uh, Probably just glad to have his hand back. <laughs> yeah, oh, probably yeah, probably. He's yeah. like, oh, sweet, we can do this. It's huge, dude. He's like, actually, it was the easiest wound to fix ever because it was instantly cauterized with a lightsaber. Yeah, it oh, cut it off. I saw a guy on. I don't know what I was watching. He had a hand transplant done. Oh, and wow. Whoa, really? I mean, it wasn't that smooth, but like he was able to do stuff again. Same yeah. race? Uh, yes, same race. There was. <laughs> I was watching a cartoon. <laughs> you ever watch Archer? I don't know if you watch Archer. But no. Archer is a pretty adult cartoon, but uh, one of the guys loses a hand, and then he gets a hand replaced, but it's a black hand. <laughs> and he's a white guy. He's a white gay guy from the Midwest, and he gets a black hand. And uh, he, it, it, there's no racism to it, but he has like, he's like, you know, it's something you don't even think about. You're like, we have a hand transplant for you. You're like, sure. Now you have <laughs> right. like this different color hand. You know, it's like, like if you had like a car, but you had to get a new you just door. You assume that, oh, I assume yeah. that my race. Of course. But... You're like, can I paint it? You're like, that's no, skin. It's skin. You're an orgy. You gotta, yeah. yeah you deal so, with orgy problems. Unless you can do the Michael Jackson, whatever he does, that magic, you know? Yeah. Actually, you look whatever probably like Allegedly. Sammy, Allegedly. Sammy Sosa. You ever see photos of Sammy Sosa? Why, has he gone lighter Holy now? shit. Have you seen, uh, Google... Sammy Sosa, 2017. What, why? What's Do you remember what he looked like when he yeah, was like a was home run? Yeah, yeah he was Cuban. Such a like, pray for me, I got the good time. What? 2017. What's going on? Oh, there's like some comparisons here. Look at this. Oh, he's lost like some pigment. Some. Look. Oh, right. Look at that. Can you see that? What, what is that? Do we have a camera on the yeah. screen? Yeah, we do. We do, right? Is that yeah. real? Is that real? I That's guess. so I don't real. Know. Yeah. Is so he, does he have a for our listeners, disease? he's got about I'd say nine shades whiter. Oh, it's like he's he's whiter than me. Look at that! Oh my goodness! It, Could it be Photoshop desaturation? No, no, no. I think he has what I I think what I heard was he has a whatever Michael Jackson hat. Oh okay. Oh, is it that like um, what's it called? Uh, go yeah, to yeah. Okay, okay. Because yeah, yeah, Joe yeah. Rogan has it on his hands. On his hands? Yeah. That's crazy. But really. I've never yeah. seen that. Yeah, check his hands out. There was a cab driver in my small town. I forget I grew what it's called. With, and he had it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it looks like it looks like you touch bleach or something. Yeah, basically, like, it's yeah. like you're you lose the pigment of your skin. Um, that's so. That's Joe what Rogan Michael, has that mm -hmm, on his on his hands. Crazy. Yeah, it's got some sort of name. Yeah, what's it called, bro? I'll, I'll get into looking it. it. Okay. He's looking it up. But like, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I didn't think that is that because Michael Jackson's was like. Perfect. Then it wasn't like you know blotchy or anything. I think he had he had maybe. Oprah money. Yeah. Right. So he, had some, <laughs> he could he maybe smooth it all out. 
Oh, man. He was like, why don't you guys just bring me the best cream? <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really excited for that. And they're like, all right, whatever you want. Because his whole body was like, you know, yeah. very smooth and homogenous. He was, he was trying to maintain his youth. Yeah. When you, when you get famous, you stay that yeah. age. That was weird, eh? His, his passing? It was weird that his doctor mm. essentially brought about the early end of his life. That was really strange. Yeah. And he was, he was like preparing for another tour or something, was he not? Like, I think he was probably in a situation where he was constantly having to cycle between touring and then... Recovery? Recovery. Right. I, I don't know. Like, he was 50 when he died. Right. Oh, what's going oh. on? Oh, we just lost light. Oh. Oh, what's going on? That's fun. Are we okay? Oh, someone's, oh, someone's, someone's messing with it. it. Someone's right. out there messing with lights. That's John okay. W. Johnny boy. Is it too? If it's too dark, we'll get we can it's get a little bright. It's up. a little dark, but it's cool for the moment. It felt like right. we did that with our minds, though. I know it was like Michael Jackson. Pigment change. <laughs> so it's called. Uh, I believe it's called. Uh, <laughs> what's that called? Vitilgo, vitiligo. Yeah, that's it. Mat- Matilja. Well, um, I can't read that. What's that? Oh, v- vitiligo. Vitiligo. Yeah. Yeah. To Do you want me to go get John? Uh, we're here at the with guest. It's okay. okay. I mean, we're on the same team. That's right. Tribe up. Yeah. Yeah. Just be like, hey, well, who's uh, touching? You keep, you keep it rolling. Okay. Maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the new lady there. You just go to. No, I didn't seem like it. Mike's. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are we on the screen? So um, are we on the screen or the? No, 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 no. We're on. We're on. Nope. Sorry. We're on. You know. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Wait a minute. We don't even we have. We were on the Rambo before. Yeah. The. Uh, can you Google uh, uh, just like on Google yeah. centric here? I'll, I'll so Oprah, it. it actually is quite unique. Apparently, it's a form of Ophira. What is Ophira? Which one is it? Thanks, Mike. Uh, when I turn this sideways here, I'll just do this. It means gold. Someone's over there. All right, we'll just keep it in here so they can't play with the lights. Tell, uh, <laughs> yeah, tell, uh, tell Mike what you just told me. I was saying uh, apparently Oprah, her name is a form of. According to babycenter.com, <laughs> is a form of Ophira, which means gold. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, yes, given that she is full in Hebrew, of gold. I think in Hebrew. That's right. called manifestation. It's Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. That's when you name your child something correct, and it just like, yeah. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Her name is Hebrew, so she's Jewish. Jewish right. That's the origin of, the, the, that's the the origin origin of, of Ophira. So yeah, that's so we're trying to figure out names. Obviously, we don't know the gender of my baby mm. yet. Yeah, but um, you know, to that's be an on, exciting because my last name is Zaremba, and if it's a boy, you I'm guys are like, cro- like you guys are we're uh, the Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Oh, nice. Hey, mm-hmm. yeah. also power, a bit. power. I think the lighting's even better now. Actually, guys, I don't want to work for you. I'm totally comfortable with this. If we're, if you're comfortable yeah, with that, oh yeah, totally. Good. We'll keep it here for safe. Yeah, moving. No more messing know. around. <laughs> um, That's only happened once, and it was so brief. They realized they did it. They're like, oh, and they ran back. Oh, in really? And they did a test the other week too. Nice. Yeah, uh, last week. That's funny. It actually uh, turned out fine. What do you think of her names though? Well, I like Zeus. Oh, oh wow, going straight God. Zeus Zaremba. I mean, Z Z. Oh, I'm a big fan. I'm <laughs> already not? a big fan. Yeah, that's for real though. Yeah. Do you even have a second choice? Because that's the first choice. That's been like the, you know, the. I don't want to say the gag name, but like I'm like kind of serious. I'm like not kind of serious. I mean, I'm, oh, I'm serious mm. about it. Consider you know? this a full endorsement. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Oh my okay. god. You don't think that kid's gonna have trouble in school? No, oh, for sure. I, a little bit, but not in like, like some people. I I can see teachers not kind of like when you see. Like Jesus, mm-hmm. they don't want to say Jesus because, like, obviously it's Jesus. They'll be like Zeus, Zeus. Oh, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Just because they don't know, oh, yeah, Zeus. they'll assume, right? Yeah, oh, but like, no, it's Zeus. They're do like, you know oh, who, okay, you do double. You know, who, uh, do you know who will give Zeus problems? Who? God, Aphrodite. Godless, godless children out there without any understanding <laughs> of history, and I wouldn't be concerned mm. with their opinions. Hera, Hera might give. Think some shit. Easy there. With, this guy's been, <laughs> he's been... Okay, every time I talk to Seymour, I'm like, what'd you do? He's like, I've just been like cooking and listening to a history podcast. Like uh, hardcore, yeah. What's the name of that one you listen to right now? History of Rome. History of Rome. It's really good. Do you listen to that? Uh, yeah. No. That's I listened really to good, the though. first like seven, I think. Oh, oh wow. nice. They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty good, but he's yeah. been doing them for a while. Cool. Uh, but no, Zeus is Zeus is really a cool. badass name, dude. That's I like it. super cool. I really well, like I, that. I think it's neat. I think it's kind of different. You, you know, Zeus is a Remba, like... 
Yeah. What do you know. think about it? You going middle name? Um, Zion. <laughs> okay. Triple Z. All right. I just might go all the way. If yeah. we're going to go that far, we might as well yeah, go all the way. Yeah, fair enough. Three Zs. And he can grow up to be an <laughs> MMA fighter. And his nickname will be No Sleep. No oh, Sleep? Okay. Zeus. Yeah, because three Zs. <laughs> sleep. It'd be like No Sleep. Zeus. I forgot the middle name. Zion. Zion Zaremba. My God, what a powerful name. You never need a business card. Dude, oh, pff, never. Right? No, that would it's be like a... You're unforgettable. Yeah. Yeah. I like but it. I really or is that like too much that. pressure to put on the kid? No, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's you know, a thing. Like, now, do you have girl names picked out, though? Yeah, we got a few. In case we haven't predicted this correctly. Yeah. No, we got a few. The girl ones are actually kind of easier, I find. Anything oh. that ends with A is kind of nice. Mm. You know, like we have like um, Solera. Solera. So it's kind of like solar. That's, that's but beautiful. Yeah. Actually, I really like that. Yeah. I like they're still kind of celestial yeah. in like, uh, you know, like the, like heavenly, you know. That's right. I um, like that. Uh, we have Lavina. Mm. Mm. Lavina. Lavina. There's a town in uh, in Bali called Lavina. That's Would you go L E or L A? L O V I N. L O. Lavina. Lavina. Oh, Lavina. Okay. Lavina. I like that. That's really good. Yeah, it's kind of nice too, right? Yeah, it's very pretty. Another male one was Hunter. Hunter. In fact, my girlfriend had a dream that she had the she birthed during the dream. What? And when the kid came out, she's like, "You're Hunter." So, mm. so oh, wow. That's okay, hold on. We have to take that seriously into account. Then. Yeah. This is this versus Zeus. I. Yeah. Hold on. I almost think that's probably how gods get their name. Could be right. The mother dreamt of his name and dreamt of the birth prior to birth. Well, here's what we have. So basically, when we have the child. We said, if there's any birthmark on it that looks like a Z, his name is Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, if there's a other bow. than that, we're just gonna kind of sit with the child and be like, you know, be like, feel out the name. There's and, no rush with na- like some no. people don't or some cultures don't name their children for, like it's like taboo to name yeah, a child actually, before a certain time. Makes or sense. I think even in and I could be misremembering this, but I believe in some like Inuit cultures, they don't assign a name. Like Not there's a name all? that you can say to like reference <clears throat> your child so yeah, that people like know what you're talking about. But then it kind of like as the child gets older, they kind of choose what they want to be called. And the whole kind of thing is that like if you suddenly wake up one day and you're like, I don't want to be known as whatever my name is. Yeah. Right? I can switch it. And the community says, OK, you're a new person. You obviously have a new thing that you want to identify with or whatever. And you just kind of switch around. So it's that's more. what I had. I'd have to look that's, that up to verify that, cool. but I like sounds, the idea of that. Yeah, yeah it sounds kind of cool. similar to the uh, Maasai warriors in Kenya. Do you know anything no, about that? No, tell. You tell. Um, my, uh, my fiance spent some time over in Kenya with uh, some Maasai warriors. and the, the things that they go through to, to like, have any kind of... Like uh, rites of passage and stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Stuff that cool. I, I actually had to ask several times if it was like... For, for like real? A, yeah, like it just sounded... To a, a Western North North American culture, it just sounds unbelievable, right? The Maasai warriors, this is really crazy, but uh, a child isn't given a name until it's five minimum. Hmm. And the child isn't given a name because so many of them die before the age of five. And your name is unique to you, never to be given again to anyone else. So they actually don't really have that many names, right? Right. And and if you die before the age of five, then that name's gone forever. So wow. that first of all was like a huge so, eye opener. Think of that. I like, think I, I like how it forces you to be creative. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And like a lot of them have Christian names now because of like mm. uh, settling and stuff like that. But yeah. um, the crazy story I heard though is what they do to actually become Messiah site warriors. So. They just changed this a couple of years ago because of conservation laws. But if essentially, you had to go hunt a lion. Oh you, you had to kill a lion with just your spear. Like, that's some crazy shit. Wow. The that seems idea. ill-advised if you want to live. Yeah, no kidding, right? But it's doable because these guys come back with, you know, uh, lion pelts, essentially, and whatever. But here's the crazy, the crazier part in this. To get... You, okay. Once you do that... You have to be circumcised as a, as a man. So it was a late in, late in life circumcision. Mm, wow. Now, here's a crazy thing. Sounds rough. This is the most fucked up part. If you opt to do this, because this is the only way to become true Messiah. If you opt to do this ceremony, uh, this is what I was told. You, you get the option of eyes closed or eyes open. And you have to keep those 
so like if you keep eyes open, you have to keep your eyes open. You can't blink. You can't make a sound. You can't make any motion or noise whatsoever when they wow. do it. And if you do, you're not a Maasai warrior. And you get one chance. There's one, just one chance. So your whole life is prepped all the way up to that. Wow. In fact, since when they name you at the age of five, they take like small knives and machetes to you, to your arms, and they'll cut you like little slips and cuts to get you prep for pain essentially wow. and they show scars to my fiance all up and down their arms just riddled all on their arms and you're, you're looking at this you're like that is crazy but then you think about the mental fortitude it mm-hmm. takes to do that right unfucking believable would their scars be in any sort of like pattern or there's just like no it's not yeah like I know what you're saying but like it's scarification not, <clears throat> you know at least have like a design yeah. or something like it's not like Papua New Guinea no. or, or like Samoan kind of tribes. It's not like right. that. It's more just like, uh, here, take this, deal with it kind of thing. That's what, at least that's what I was told. I don't know. But Maasai warriors, unbelievable. That's crazy, man. They have I a, mean, yeah. well, and I mean, because the whole, I mean, it's, that's a very special like um, rite of passage. But, you know, we, we, we don't even have any real rites of formal rites of passage in North America, really. You not know what really. I mean? And I think that's a huge thing missing, especially like women <clears> do. When they give birth, like that is an absolute transcending experience that is a challenge to them on every level of their being. Yeah. But men in this day and age, like maybe like go and playing like a university level, you know, sports or something like that is kind of pseudo that or doing something super challenging, putting yourself through that. Yeah. There's nothing like formalized, you know what I mean? I mean, graduation is a thing, <clears throat> like a high school yeah, thing. Yeah, but I mean, uh, where's like, where's the challenge to like, to, I mean, yeah, sure. You learn and you study, and you just show up, basically. If you yeah. just I just mean up. there's like a cer- like the ceremonial ritual I'm nature like, of it. You but know, yeah, a you're right. Passage, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like something that getting really a driver's license when you can finally like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think you're you're illustrating my point perfectly right yeah, now. Yeah. Actually, of how yeah. I feel yeah. like we're lacking. Sure, they're not. Sub- they're substantial. In there's milestones. Some way. In, yeah, you're but, right. But I'm, I'm meaning like a rite of passage, like, mm-hmm. you know, doing a vision quest or like yeah, yeah, going yeah. on like your own mm-hmm. little, you know, mm-hmm. journey of sorts, mm-hmm. like to discover the world and f- find out what are you made of? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Versus what do, like what do you going recommend? to safe spaces in schools to make sure you don't get bullied. Uh, like, that's not quite the same. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm getting pretty fed up with okay. the world. Mike, I don't right. know if you know this. No. I'm getting pretty fed up. Tell me, tell me your uh, <sighs> issues, your beef. Uh, I'm getting pretty fed up with two things right now. Two things are really on my mind. Okay. One, uh, people drop, like the mic drop culture. I've been hearing other people talk about it and I really like it. The people that are like jumping in on conversations like, well, actually, da, 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 facts that don't belong, da, da, straw man argument, okay, logical fallacy. Right. And then they're like, so there. And then they digitally drop the mic i fucking hate that more than anything do they actually do they actually oh. illustratingly did they drop some the of them mic? do with, oh, the, okay. with gifts and stuff yeah, like that yeah good gifts. but the thing that bothers me the most about it is those people outside of an online form mm. don't have that skill set they don't have that mic drop skill set you know what I mean? like they don't have like any realm of that that skill set at all like they, right. they have no understanding of like what it takes to speak in front of a crowd captivate an audience lo- logically debate in a manner that allows yourself to actually to lose mm-hmm. like I, right. I, I have no problem talking about something and then saying like actually you know what I don't know about that I was wrong about it I think what we can do here is we can learn and I can learn because I just made a mistake right I just feel like there's so much escalation like ramp up ramp up ramp up right and I get caught into this and CMart calls me on it all the time, but I get caught online all the time. I'm just bored. Like, I don't know why, but I engage with people and I'm just like, it's like, I want to convince them that they're, they're not doing it the best way. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so dumb, man. Have thing. you, have you caught on to the Jordan Peterson wave at all? Yeah, actually quite a bit to the point that I have defended him on this show actually to, I forget who was, uh, kind of disparaging him, but uh, what was their disparaging point, or what was their uh, what was their angle? I'm curious. That's the thing. It wasn't even. It was without merit. Okay, because that's like, why I jumped I'm, all over it. You know, I'm not. I'm saying like I'm 100 percent believer of Jordan Peterson, but I mean like the stuff he's saying is pretty hard to counter. Exactly. To like be like, I don't know about that. You know what I mean? I actually find people that disagree with him. It's almost like the biggest red flag ever. I can mm. be like, I'm like, oh, so you don't like analytically 
or in, in any capacity intellectually think critically at all. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have any of your own feel like because if you had those feelings, you wouldn't just be like, oh, he's a misogynist, he's uh, he's sexist, he's uh, Islamophobic, he's this, he's. It's just like right. whoa, whoa, whoa. He's transphobic. You've actually met people that believe that. Fuck yeah! Oh my god, the amount mm-hmm. of people. Like I feel more often than not that I'm talking to people that are, don't share my views on things. Like mm. we were talking a couple of weeks ago and we we're like, look, uh, I'm, uh, I can't believe you have to say this, but like I'm anti-Nazi clearly, right? but I'm pro-human. I'm right. pro-human. I'm mm-hmm. anti-violence though. Mm-hmm. So I'm in this weird spot where it's like, yeah, you know, I don't really think Antifa should be punching people in the face and stuff like that, arbitrarily deciding who's fucking Nazis. If you're wearing a swastika, you're a fucking Nazi and you're a piece of shit. I totally get that. But when you see people just jawing random people on the street or something like that, right? not cool. I don't really think that's cool. I think there's always kind of a better Are you a way. random person if you're wearing a swastika on your arm? No, but yeah. I've, I've seen videos of people being accused of being Nazi and then being knocked out for that kind of thing. And this kind of stuff permeates through our culture into our school systems, and then you have generations of kids growing up thinking it's okay to persecute people individually, and that's a super slippery slope. I really don't like that, but I'm pro-human. So I'm also like, okay, wait, at some level you have to take a stand against people. It's just, I don't know. I don't like the ugliness of yeah. of that kind of stuff. I don't know. I, I have no problem debating people forever. I'll, I'll, yeah. I, love, I love conversing on points, but I have a hard time when it comes to violence. I don't like... I don't like it, man. I don't like. I I prefer to stay in a competitive realm, like right. MMA or something. Like right, that. Right, right, for sure. And I think, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, real violence, like outside of say sports or whatever, it's just. I mean, it, I mean, maybe if there's a life or death situation, you're being attacked. Totally, be violent. You know yeah. what I mean? But um, you're right. Beyond that, it's like totally. Oh, right. Then it's just pathology. You know. Right, because my concern is that history will always show that no matter how noble the cause, eventually those causes are hijacked by idealists that take that power and they they use it for less than than positive means. Like, do you know how terrifying it is to have, we had Russian Tim from Rocket from Russia on the show. He is a longtime friend of us and longtime friend of the show, super good fucking guy. And he's, he, he's literally born from Russia, lived there, grew up there, came over here. We met in college. And his perspective on groups like Antifa are, like, completely different than North America. So mm-hmm. he looks at that and he says, like, he's like, dude, they're, like, soccer hooligans over there. They're, like, some of the worst kinds of people out there. Right. You know? Yeah. Our conversations on this show were shocking me. I'd never even heard of that phrase. And this was, like, almost a year, year and a half ago. I don't even know. Yeah, about a year and a half. Yeah. And, uh. I had no idea that this group even existed. Then you see its rise in North America with, right. you know, dismantling the, the alt right and whatever. So I look at like the way people are trying to, they're so quick to throw their loyalty behind something. Sure. Without really thinking what it stands well, for. Well, and, that, and that's, that's the point I was going to get into is like the whole thing of like knowing the ideology that all this stuff is predicated on is super important. So and that's important. the stuff I didn't even know. And that's where Peterson's been very helpful for me mm-hmm. is to understand like, well, these things are based, like this postmodernism that he always refers it yeah, to yeah. is based off of these, um, these Marxist uh, ide- ideologies. And ultimately, these types of ideologies will, will, end in this sort of thing like we saw in the Soviet Union and communism and that kind of like and why, why that system doesn't work mm-hmm. you know now it's not saying that our system currently is perfect in this shining gem at all it has many flaws and there's tons of corruption of course but it's like people will jump onto the idea without knowing the 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 basis of the ideological foundations that it's coming from and actually what it means I think there's a lot of people out there that do not know the ideology behind these causes or these yeah. these things that oh. they're backing because I, I get what they're backing and I think it's admirable that they're standing up for something totally, totally. but I don't think they know the background of it deep enough and that's where Jordan Peterson is very very eye opening for me I completely agree and I, I think he does an excellent job of analyzing the material and breaking it down in a way that is approachable for like pretty much any level of reading like yeah. if, you, if you even if you just listen to him speak Yes, he's, and that's the thing. Excellent. And then, and, and also get past of his uh, his delivery because some people get offended just by his like he's sharp. He's yeah. sharp, he's, right? He's very he, just. And I don't mean he that, put like, that aside. Yeah, and just listen to what he's actually saying. Yeah, and I don't mean he's sharp like uh, 
you know, he's like, he's quick-witted. I mean, like, he's sharp and he's, like, well, he's ag- ag- abrupt. And I, I believe, yeah. like, you know, he speaks a lot of truth mm-hmm. on a lot of things. I'm not saying everything necessarily because I don't know everything. I don't know the ultimate truth. But I do think he speaks a lot of truth. And truth can be very piercing for people. If he tells something that's, that's, like, that's true for somebody but they don't want to hear it, boom, it stings and it pokes and it hurts. Oh, and, yeah. But that's why they know it's fucking real because mm-hmm. they're like, that hurt because it's true we better shut him down we better yeah, get man. him to not talk at our university we can't have him spread well he's ideas. coming back out here uh this fall and we're actually in trying to get him on the show um i think he would oh, be a great addition to vancouver real yeah. honestly no he'll be man he is i mean i'd have to prepare for that show like i've never prepared for any show before he's a smart fellow yeah and yeah. you just want to do it justice you know what i mean i'd want to make yeah. sure that i ask the right questions that I want to ask. Yeah. Um, well, he's a good guy, but you know, yeah. I have great news for you, Mike Zaramba. You're a great guy and a smart Thanks, fellow. Man. Yeah. Thank you. How about that? <laughs> you know, I'm here. I'm alive. It's your time. Oh, it's that time? Oh. Just in time, actually. Nice little segue. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, right now, if you're uh, near a phone or a computer, you might want to go ahead and browse yourself over to a wonderful website and that website is floathouse.ca why would you want to go there well it's simply the premier isolation tank experience in the lower mainland now in alberta Mm -hmm. and advancing everywhere southernly even maybe 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 i can't talk about it allegedly but allegedly Allegedly. hard abbotsford's coming abbotsford's coming yeah how many locations are total right now Seven. Seven. Let's go a little battery. Seven. Yes, and, and it'll be nine by the end of the year. Seven. Nine. Because we got uh, a second one coming on the island, and Abbotsford is coming up. So. Wow. Yeah, dude, I'm so stoked to see the growth. I'm so stoked to see so many people Thank embracing you. flow culture. It seems cool. like every year there's another cool article about it. And for our listeners out there that are like wondering what a float is, a float is simply one of the best ways to unlock the mysteries of your mind, or mm. or you could just relax. In the sure. tank and enjoy some quiet solitude. I like it because it's super tranquil. You would deal with amazing staff. They're very knowledgeable. You actually get uh, super super clean facility, uh, f- fresh towels, house coats, slippers. Um, again, the staff being knowledgeable is one of the most important parts because they help you put it uh, yourself at ease, uh, so you don't feel like you're out of your depth. Literally, when you're jumping into a tank, it's amazing. I like it. It's like a spa for your mind. It's fantastic. Totally. It's so good. Yeah. And uh, right now, if you're interested in trying it out, you can use our podcast promo code I I Podcast, and that gets you twenty percent off your next float. Powerful. What? So good. It's powerful. Yeah. Powerful promo code. And uh, you know what's really excellent is uh, the new addition of the cryo tank. Yes. Cryotherapy is something you must try. I seriously recommend this, especially if you're an athlete, um, especially if you're someone who deals with inflammation pain. If you have, you know, your backs uh, or your shoulders or your knees are sore, or maybe mm-hmm. you're recovering from uh, like a surgery, you just got your knee done or something. I can't recommend this enough. If you go ahead and try cryotherapy, the first thing you're going to notice is it gives you a massive boost of uh, norepinephrine. That's yes. how you say that, right? Nor- yep. Norepinephrine. Nailed it. Norepinephrine, which is a naturally uh, a naturally produced chemical in your body, and it, when your body experiences like high temperatures of freezing cold. Uh, in short bursts and controlled bursts, especially in the tank, what it does is your body actually releases these natural chemicals in order to deal with, you know, your blood essentially rushing through your body at a different yeah. state. So when you climb out of the tank, you get this nice tingly feeling. You feel so charged up. I climbed out of literally, I walked right out of that, threw on my clothes and came here and started the, we did the show like right away. And wound I, up. I feel so wound up. And people are doing the, the float and freeze combo too. Oh, float really? and freeze. I float like that. Float freeze. Yeah. So would you only you, do the freeze after the float. That makes a lot you, more sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you recommend? Yeah. Well, I'm going to try it both ways. I want to try it both ways. I see that. I got to know. <laughs> what if you train them together? Float, freeze, float. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sandwich it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be delicious. Float, freeze, float. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I was concerned. Uh, I thought it was going to be really painful, and it was actually super, super nice. I find it gets really cold oh, around your wrist. That's though, it. Eh? Okay, like, so ah, so that was the only the bones, the yeah, bony parts. That was my mm. only issue. Uh, was I felt my left wrist, yeah. right on the top of my wrist. Yeah, it, it was it was like Isn't it weird, a weird cold spot. Yeah, I was wondering if that's because like my my watch wrist. Do you wear a watch on that wrist? No, no. Okay. I think it's just something about the wrists. 
weird, mm, right? Yeah. And but and I mean, but it's very tolerable. Like you're not like oh, I yeah. can't do this, but it's just you know that you, you wear can gloves feel it. in there. Yeah, yeah wear like, gloves. Yeah, little like slippers. They take care of you. Socks. It, I mean, honestly, yeah. Jay is such a, a smart fella. Yeah, and uh, we can't recommend it enough. Make sure you go to floodhouse.ca. Yep. And uh, Vancouver Cryotherapy.ca. Vancouver Cryotherapy.ca to check out the cryo tanks. Put that link in the notes. I will definitely be doing that this week. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can work something out for our listeners. I'm sure, we future. can get a code. Yeah. yeah why figure not? Figure something out. Yep. But make sure you use our podcast promo code for Floathouse II Podcast. Get yourself twenty percent off a of float. I float. Mike floats. Cmart. We float. <laughs> I haven't yet. I still haven't. I can't oh, believe it's, so God damn, it's ridiculous. Every time someone's like, oh, you guys float all the time. Just book it before the show one time. Just try I know. It. I really should. He's yeah, actually booked and should. rescheduled Well, twice now, I think. It's called resistance, times? folks. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I want to I I do it. <laughs> you want to do it when it's uh, feeling natural for you, bro. You're going to go in and enjoy yeah. yourself. But to be honest, though, I mean... I mean, not saying this is for you, but, uh, you know, ha- having apprehension before that first load is super normal, mm. you know, like it's Hell a very yeah. unusual environment. Hell Some yeah. people aren't comfortable being, um, just alone in silence in the mm. dark with yourself with yourself. It, and so way. it's like, what's going to happen? What, what am I going to be like? Can I handle it? Yes, you can handle it. Totally. You're, you're stronger than you think. Um, and it's really just a matter, like you said, having the team cultivate that trust for you, feeling secure and empowered that you can get out whenever you want Absolutely. and give yourself what you need to be compassionate with yourself. Yes. That's the most important part. I think, uh, for our, for our listeners, oh, sorry, I just hit the mic. Uh, for our listeners that have already floated, you'll know this, but there's a message once you go into the, the, uh, the, the room. It's in a different spot in each room, I think. But there's a message that says, like, you're in a safe you're in a safe place with there's no right or wrong there's That's no right. judgment you can just be yourself in here for the next you know 90 minutes it's That's just right. you I and think where, where really can important. you get that man like where can yeah. you go and like and like i mean here's the thing we're, we're probably our, our own harshest critics you know what i mean Agreed. like of ourselves like we judge yeah. ourselves all the time we critic we te- like you know we talk down to ourselves and it's like let that shit go. And actually, it's really useful in the tank to analyze your thinking and analyze your thoughts and like what type of vibe do you put out there to yourself and how do you think of yourself? And mm-hmm. and a good way to actually check in with that is like what do you kind of judge other people? Because you know what that is, folks? That's your shadow. And your shadow side is typically what you find repulsive and repugnant in other people. That is a part of you. And it's really a good idea to probably integrate that into you and actually come to terms with that is also within you as well. Oh, I get chills know. listening to Mike yeah. Zermba. We're not all just merry, you know, like drop knowledge. Like we, we want to just pretend that we're super happy and, and all good mm-hmm. when, you know, the yin and the yang, the, the light and the dark. <laughs> And, uh, you know, like the, the, the chaos and the orders within us all, like, it, it, you know, and so we, we toggle between the two and that's what life is. We live in a duality, you know, this, this is life. We have the hot and the cold, we have the good and the bad and like, and we can be evil and we can be benevolent. Um, and if you acknowledge that within yourself, then you have way more, I think awareness for your actions and your behaviors and things you say to people because you're gonna realize like your capability for wrongdoing. Yeah, absolutely. And so you're more cautious and not in a bad way, but just in like an effective way and not being as ignorant. Mm -hmm. Dude, I couldn't have said it better. That's why you're a a smart guy. Honestly, I, I like hearing you speak about this stuff because I know how dialed in you are you're like you're you're fucking well, here's the thing in. though man like everything i I'm, I'm spouting off is like i've learned it from somewhere and you know you, then you just kind of like bring your own thinking into you thoughts and words and out your mouth you know what i mean so it's like it's not me it's <laughs> but not wait, me what about but that uh, regardless you've heard that expression when you uh you learn something twice once when you learn it and mm, once when you teach, teach it. it yes yeah mm. Something yeah. about something about uh, properly explaining something you. Know. Well, that's why it's so cool to have really yeah. good conversations with people you really connect with, man. Like it's so important. Like, like obviously we get to do it with the podcast all the time. Yeah, that's the cool thing about having a podcast. But you don't need a podcast to do that. Just if you have someone that you really click with and you like to talk about interesting subjects, well as politics or or health or or your relationships and social mm-hmm. like 
beings or nature, whatever it is, doesn't matter the topic, have those conversations because they're so cool to explore and like, man, talk. Yeah. That's why free speech is so important. Like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Cause you're going to put things out there and then have someone reflect it back. Yeah. Even if it's just, even if that's just you saying it, um, and then you hear it when you say it, like, oh, wait, wait a minute, that sounds a little weird or feels a little off. Cause sometimes when things are just locked in your head and you're not having those conversations, you know, you, you get distorted. That feeling though is so important. Your compass, your internal compass and knowing when something's off, mm -hmm. when you're not in the flow, when you're not in flow state of mind. Uh, I actually, your brother, Mm. Uh, put me onto a book this week called uh, Stealing Fire. Yeah, I, I haven't read it either. Here, it's dope. Yeah? Yeah. And he's a smart recommender of books. That's he not is. How you say man, it. he's a junkie. <laughs> That's not how you say it, by the way. Re recommender. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've said. Yeah, there's no smart recommender. I'm a of smart books. recommender. It's like, mm, I it's don't like, know about that. Do hey, you, man, I, I make up words all yeah. the time, but I knew exactly what you meant. It didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you read, my son? That's what I wanted to say to myself. Yeah, do you read? Because it doesn't sound like I do. Uh, but, no, he's, he's uh, I mean, he's, he's a junkie. He loves the mind candy, you know, this eating that stuff every day podcasts audiobooks that's but, a, that's how you grow though that's you, true. you get a lot of information have you uh have you had any experience recently running into anyone that is like stagnant like they just kind of seem stuck yes totally yeah absolutely yeah i'm part of a men's group and we meet every monday night mm -hmm. um i try to make it every meeting and um yeah i mean so with that i've been doing it for almost well all this year pretty much and so, you know, guys just, once they feel comfortable, start to share, uh, just talk about your life. And like, you know, it's kind of a little bit more than just like going to the bar and having a beer. It's like the intention is to sit in a circle and fucking just say whatever the fuck you want to say. Yeah. And then have people call you out on your bullshit, which really is like, you know, it can be kind of brutal sometimes. Like that, that piercing, poking truth feeling that you feel like. Man, that's that's like a normal feeling you get when you when you go to this group. And yeah, there's guys in there that are just like they're they're stuck and you can see their patterns and we say it to them and they're like, I know, but that they still don't make the yeah. change. So um what kind definitely. of what kind of personality is in there? Is it like people that don't necessarily have that masculine presence in their life? Is that like No, I think it's just it's cultivating it's men who are looking to cultivate a healthy uh male bond outside of like i'd say cultural norms mm. um and and more of like you know we we've been raised uh predominantly by women um yeah and, that's kind of what i mean like like you know because I mean? like so there's like our two... men our, our fathers typically go and work and and they're not whereas back in the day once you turn like 11 12 years old you're working in the farm or you're hunting or you're you know more when it was more tribal and like agricultural times like you're more you're like you're immersed by men like the men, the male brings you along and you're, you're doing men work now and you're, you're socialized with, within men. Um, but most teachers are women, you know, especially in elementary school and stuff like that. We're raised by our mothers. And, and so this has definitely developed some pretty interesting, um, behaviors in men. And I, I would even be willing to say pathologies in men. Mm. And so what this is kind of doing is this guy, it's called the Samurai Brotherhood and you can look it up online. He's got a whole website and this guy, it's, it's basically based off the mythopoetic men's movement and just kind of going back to like the Iron John story and like the, the hero's journey kind of thing. And like acknowledging, like be responsible, take full responsibility for everything in your life. And, and and create order and structure and and get shit done and and like just you know, it's i don't know it's just having accountability and um support mm -hmm. um and, and things to like what do you want and have your voice heard and then have it critiqued um so it, it's kind of it's a very interesting process what's the name of the gentleman who founded samurai brotherhood uh phil t mistelberger that's, that's it yeah yeah uh he's a good guy i've met him before yeah he's interesting he's a, yeah he's yeah. a he's a very um firm conversationalist I, and by that i mean like there there's no middle ground with you know like he's speaking to you very directly and yeah yeah i, I really enjoy that he's, and that's what we practice in the group you yeah. know like if someone's kind of dancing and not saying getting to the point like just kind of babbling on be like what do you want to say say it you know and, and it gets you just speaking 
better and thinking more directly and being mm -hmm. able to look at somebody and say, and so we do lots of different exercises too. We do a lot of different eye gazing exercises and grunting exercises and like primal screaming exercises. Um, just, just kind of weird stuff, no doubt, but it's kind of cool because you don't ever really get to do that shit. Just like completely in a, a realm where everyone's trying to improve themselves essentially. Yeah. 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 So that's pretty, it's pretty interesting because you're right that that doesn't really exist for many people like Seamart, would you ever do something like that i don't know i don't know if the the philo like it sounds interesting for sure i just always i'm like just part of me says like men's group is like we're the most like privileged people what? ever to grace the, <laughs> it's just like i don't i don't always see sometimes like the need like not the need because people who need support need support right but to me like men's support is always kind of like every support as it ever existed is like in support of men i i mean uh, I, I think i think you're you're blending things here that don't need to be blended yeah and that, it's not a criticism i'm just like that's where my mind goes i'm always like I see and that's a like conditioning though. then if you're if that's where your mind's going there i'm, I'm not trying to psychoanalyze you here but mm -hmm. it's like you know that's that's where your mind then like oh men are privileged white men especially um there's nothing wrong with being a man sure of course and there's nothing wrong with being masculine you know, the, the whole notion of toxic masculinity. Um, I'm sure there is some toxic. There's, there's toxic people. Yeah. Okay. And there's toxic behavior, mm -hmm. uh, masculinity. And so and there's toxic, toxic femininity, like, you know, whatever. Like you can add toxic before anything. But, you know, being masculine and letting yourself be that energy is really, really important that, um, you know, has been shut down. Yeah in a lot of ways and there's a healthy version of it for sure and a, a conscious version of it and it's not about being uh hyper masculine it's like just being masculine mm -hmm. and it's okay being comfortable yeah yeah, yeah that's the and thing so we do exercise to, to help that yeah see that's the thing like because i really dislike um sometimes in conversations especially i feel like it's only really happened in the last year mm -hmm. but sometimes in conversations a conversation will be steered in a way that i remember even a few years ago where, okay, we're having a good conversation. There's back and forth, laugh, mm -hmm. laugh. That's it. But it'll it'll just someone has to tag it as an ism. Mm -hmm. There's like this weird ism culture that's kind of rolled into our our lives. And I'm, I'm here's my concern is that you brought up, you know, there's toxic people, but like the catchphrase to that right now is toxic masculinity. Like right. I I dislike the fact that it's so discounting. It's like so widespread such a bl blanket statement like yeah, it's too like generalized. here's the thing we can't even talk about this on the show the three of us right now three men we can't talk about this without someone easily dismissing this as like well of course they don't like it of course they don't because right. you know it's just like wait a minute no we we don't like it like not every one of us is trying to seize power you know that's the thing that's like, it and, they, and they think it's like and ultimately when you know, identify with groups shit. when you start to make it into group identities that's a huge problem that's a huge okay, issue okay because you can start dividing it into it has to be divided into the individual mm -hmm. it has to go down into the individual you can't have group you can't because not everyone in the group is the same. And how many groups are you going to have? You can, you can uh, diversify and, ma and make that fragmentation happen. It has to, eventually, it goes down to the individual. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it goes down to, on every level, whether it's a physical impairment, whether it's a skin tone difference, whether it's um, IQ levels are different. Like, everyone is different. Every person is unique. And that's the level it has to play at. So when you start to have people in subgroups and say, you know, we have to protect this subgroup because they're being oppressed, go to the people. It has to go down to the individual. And actually, all this shit, I believe, goes down to the individual. And we are individually responsible as well for all this kind of like, like every single person is responsible for all these different clashes that we're having as a society, as a culture. Every person has to make change within themselves mm -hmm. like it, it's not about that group has to change and that group has to change and this group has to rise up fuck the groups it's the it's the individual and if someone is suffering or someone is being oppressed or whatever then deal with that and who's doing that and yeah. then fuck that dude or fuck that girl okay like yeah like it has to go down to the individual i i couldn't agree more i, I think it becomes a real issue when we're making wide blanket statements that, that don't 
that don't actually pertain to the individual's value. It's so easy to say like, like an SJW and you immediately think of like what that looks like in your head. You can, it's so easy to do that, right? right? But there are some people in those factions, so to speak, that are legitimately in a non-malicious manner uh, trying to advance uh, a positive you know, agenda. Totally. And then there are people that are doing it that haven't quite got to that point yet. And those types of mentalities, those personalities are just, just as vindictive as people uh, on the other side of the spectrum that are, you know, just hoarding power and attempting to uh, marginalize other people. And it's gross. It's really gross. I constantly find myself more and more in the center between those two because I'm like, I feel like I don't want, again, I don't want violence to be the ruling uh, medium. Mm-hmm. I don't want it to be, you know, the deciding factor. I think that it should be intellectually discussed and there should be platforms available for people to do so. Yeah. And having, and critical thinking is such a huge part of this because like, can you simultaneously hold two contradicting viewpoints or ideas at the same time? Like that is such a val. That is what critical thinking is. It's not having, I'm on this side and I'll look at the other side. It's like, no, look at both and make them both as formidable as possible. Yeah. Like make both con- like like con- controversial ideas, whatever they are, opposing yeah. forces as formidable as possible, and then see you know which one stacks up, and that goes into like really deep philosophical roots mm-hmm. and like you know because yeah, people like hear beyond, that beyond most of our education is going to say yeah because people hear that and they think that like okay well, I'll think of t- uh, a divisive issue right now okay here's my point here's my other point I think of this no that's not the level of thought you need to give it you need to like seriously like arm those sides you Mm -hmm. need to arm those points in your head and you need to give them valid reasoning for existing like as much as much as i disagree with some of uh you know this ism kind of culture this labeling kind of stuff which i'm doing right now with it by saying that i understand but like some of the stuff i disagree with it the ways i come to comprehend it in my head Mm especially taking a nice float and thinking about stuff like this. The ways <laughs> I come to comprehend it uh, is I think of like the worst version of that individual, the worst possible version. I think of that and then I imagine hugging them and mm-hmm. hugging them with sincerity and actually like wrapping them in love and like pouring energy of love or into this person and sincerely meaning it. Mm-hmm. And you know in your head when it's sincere and when you're actually just performing the action. Totally. So I, I think about that. Once I can get my head around that mentally, I feel like it's just verbal jujitsu after that. Yeah. We'll just talk yeah. and mental somehow. masturbation. Yeah. I'm like, okay. People love to like, you know, I mean, we can kind of fall victim to it because we have, I mean, it's part of it. Right. But it's like people love to say, to express their point and, and to hear themselves talk and to like articulate and to do all that kind of stuff. And, Man, so sometimes where you just got to shut up yeah. and just sit and think or sit in silence and stop like everything and calm down and just breathe and kind of like, you know, put, put the whole world on pause for yourself so you can kind of get recentered in yourself and grounded again and, and then really take action within your own life and your own behaviors because that's ultimately all you truly have control over. Like, you know, is really like, your realm of influence and that starts with you and your bedroom Mm -hmm. and cleaning your shit and cleaning your house and organizing and like getting your life in order as much as possible i'm a huge fan of being tidy and i know that is like a weird thing to say but it helps keep your mind clear dude the amount of people i talk to and you get a glimpse into their their home domestic situation and, and you're like you're like dude i could start you immediately on like hey just clean this are you meth shaming right now I'm mess shaming you, you, <laughs> you dirty, filthy bastards. No, man. Go, I'm honestly, mess shaming you. Uh, like, and that's where the, the, the Peterson <laughs> stuff has been super helpful for me. I, like, I love that. There's all those memes like clean your room. You know, start with that. Seriously. Like, you what, start with the things that you can actually fix. Well, when, uh, when an addict goes into treatment, one of the first things they'll do is after you've gone through withdrawal and whatnot, mm-hmm. is they'll put a broom in your hand. And they'll say, this is your job, your responsibility. And you right. build confidence by having them repeat actions successfully. Right. That's like one of the tenets of recovery. If you look at, if you look at uh, say, in a military sense. Karate kid. 
Karate Kid. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> Let's get really into this. One. Miyagi <laughs> is making him wax. Yeah, like, but like that's the same thing. It's like some there's some that's saying cleanliness is next to godliness. The idea that if you're capable of repeatedly doing a task properly, it's to, kind of a, it's a Zen thing. It's a very Zen thing. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, and but, it's your space, like. I mean, oh, I love the, it. The inner and the outer, like, you know, on the world of non-duality, there is no inner and outer. And so that literally, that space literally affects your mind and it affects your energy, I believe anyways. And so when you tidy it all up and clean it, and it's like, man, you, f- I fucking feel better. Yeah, I do. I feel so much better. We, we did a purge when we moved into yeah. our new place. Purging is awesome. Oh, it felt so good. I was... Liz has a, a collection of books um, on our bookshelf uh, that are like old, like leather bound style. Mm-hmm. And one of them is like, like, she loves Chaucer. She loves Jeffrey Chaucer. Okay. He's an so, author. Yeah. He did Canterbury Tales and stuff like that. I don't know if you don't know that stuff. I don't know. It's pretty. I'm not a lit. You're not. Well, hey, I'm a good geek. book recommender guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just like you, bro. Yeah. I, uh, I actually was so deep into cleaning and purging by the end of the week. This is a dumb joke, but I, I kept telling Liz every time I'd hold up something to throw out, I'd be like, what about this? And she'd say, um, and I'd be like, who's my favorite author? And she, she never play along for a long time. But then eventually I'd be like, I'll tell you who I can see it's, this. I can hear this. It's tosser, Jeffrey oh tosser. God. And I'm tossing this right now. And she'd be like, she'd be like, I don't like that joke. And then after the 57th time, she still didn't like it. But 58 yeah, times, she loved it. She, she loved it on 58 times. When I talked to her next, she seemed like, I've never liked it. Never. No, 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 no. Even our yeah. poor listeners right now. But yeah, I, uh, I love, for some reason, I don't know. Feels you watched that man. minimalist documentary on I haven't Netflix? seen it yet. I've heard really good things, though. But I, I think you love it. Too. I think you'd love it. Yeah, cool. It has inspired me in... Not the like the extreme ways are the you know completely uh, uh, like just taking your whole life and putting yeah. it into uh, like you know a it's garbage bag yeah, yeah basically yeah and just like you have you have one plate one fork one knife that's like it that's short sighted but yeah, little, yeah it, it's a bit much yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah friends yeah. over yeah exactly <laughs> right yeah what if I have a hundred friends yeah. over but the way they put it though in the context right. is so interesting because the guy the you know some of the people they interview before they made these massive changes they're like they're like take a moment to really look at the inventory in your house yeah. they're like how many like for instance how many spatulas do you have how many and like three C Mart says three yeah I think that's two too many. I'm going to go a hard extreme. You need to get rid of all your spatulas, bro. <laughs> just use your hand like God intended. Just, <laughs> just on old, a frying pan. The old pan flip. <laughs> yeah. Get the old wrist going. And, yeah, that's right. What are you, you some kind of or- orgy over there? You got, you got a mech hand? You want to <laughs> throw on? Shoehorn hand. That's right. Kramer. <laughs> the, shoe, the shoehorn. Uh, actually, you know what episode I watched last night was mm-hmm. the uh, Bookman episode. Which one was that? It's where Jerry has a book that hasn't returned from the New York Public Library <laughs> right. since 1971. Tropic of, oh, Tropic of Cancer. <laughs> the book, the guy that plays Bookman is so intense. Holy fuck. That's one of my favorite performances ever. Was, so it, was it George or Jerry? Well, spoiler alert, but George ended up actually having the book. Oh, right. Because <laughs> his, his uh, Allegedly. coach, he got his coach or the, the phys ed teacher fired. Right. He used to call him, can't stand ya. <laughs> That's shit. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. How I got to Seinfeld. That's what the fuck happened. I'm talking about that. Yeah, that was a rabbit hole. Um, uh, dude, do you have? Uh, there's always something being pumped by a Vancouver Real. You guys always yes. have events being put on. Yes, we do successfully. What's going on right now? Uh, we have our next Vancouver Real meetup with Steve Maxwell. I'm not Woo! sure if you know who that is. Yes, I do. But he's like. Strength and conditioning specialist, um, uh, black belt in jujitsu. He's like an he's a legend though. He's an older guy, and uh, he's like super fit. And he's trained Joe Rogan, and a lot of different athletes, uh, huge in the jujitsu world. But he's doing like a breath. He's doing a, a workshop and a, a breath work. Um, he's really into breathing, like Wim Hof. It's different. More like more like pranayama stuff, like yogic kind of breath. Oh wow, stuff, okay. which is really really cool. I've done quite a bit of that myself stuff personally, and it's it's. Wicked stuff. Is that the hallucinogenic kind of? Not the holotropic breath work, although all that stuff is uh, similar. You know what I mean? Seamart, do you right. know about this stuff? Do you want to jump in? I've heard about it, yeah. Yeah? I think you, that'd be right up your alley. Yeah. How many yoga classes have you ever done? One. 
one. Oh, I should jump right into it. You got to do yoga, man. You'd be fine. Yoga's so good. So good. Anyways, but so <laughs> that's happening. And then we have another one in November with uh, the guy we had on our podcast last week, Dr. Carlos de Leon. Yes. And he is, I don't know what he is. He's so interesting. He, um, he basically has learned tons of different spiritual traditions and lineages, mm. um, like like a lot of tantric work and uh, especially Korean things, like just these ancient like ancient things that are actually like disappearing. And he's like he's all about like teaching how to do out of body experiences, lucid dreaming, uh, dream therapy oh, stuff. Wow. Like super interesting guy. And uh, we're doing a, a workshop with him in November or like a. Q&A kind of lecture in November 7th. Really? Yeah. So it's all on the VancouverReal.tv um, website in the events section. Mm. Um, and then also we also have the Mindful Mass. Have you heard of Mindful yes, Mass? Yes. new actually, community we're doing. You guys have been doing so well with that. Yeah. Andy, yeah. Andy's been just, you know, ha- taking the torch with that for sure. I love how it's like you guys do the group photos every time. Yeah. And I see it just growing every time, which is yeah. really cool. Dude, it's growing like crazy. So we do like a big, like it's like a flash meditation mob. That's it. Yeah. And we coordinate online then everyone shows up at this time and we just do this big group seated meditation for like 25 minutes or something like is that. it guided or is it uh it guides a little bit and then it stops like so we have a leader a, a guide for the meditation her name's carolyn mm. um and she's awesome like it's impossible to not like if you just sit down and listen to her like she'll take you right into the meditation it's oh, yeah. so nice. cool yeah it's like effortless that's really cool and uh yeah it's growing like crazy so it's mindfulmass.org is the website and then uh, i think like Vancouver Meditation Mob on uh, Facebook. Find that group and, and join up. It's super cool and it's growing all the time. You can go for a cryo, go for a float, go to. That's a triple threat, Mindful Mass right after. Mindful oh, yeah. Mass. Or before. Mm. Or before. Or, and then check out a Maxwell seminar on uh, yoga breathing. Oh my yep. God. Yeah. So lots of cool stuff happening, you know, all within like our sort of realm of what? healing and higher consciousness. I'm very excited okay. about it. I think, uh, I think one of my favorite things is getting to watch the growth of of the you know the the tribe and like the just the idea of putting uh self love like health first it's so important it's so important and and taking time to actually invest in yourself is so important and i'm only just scratching the surface of it totally and, yeah yeah, yeah. self care man like and it's not a selfish act because it's going to improve every interaction you have with every other person that you interact with. Take care of yourself so you can take care of the ones you love. That's right, man. That's really it. It's huge. Uh, Mr. Zaremba, how can people follow you if they're so inclined? Should we just um, point to the I'm sign? I'm on Facebook. But yeah, no, I think <laughs> join the, the Vancouver Reel is probably the best like engaging tool. You have for a us. group on Facebook. Yes, yeah, so we have a Facebook community See, group we don't as do, well. We don't do groups on Facebook. Maybe that's You should do a group because it gets people interacting more a little chatting? bit. Yeah, yeah. Groups aren't it, bad. That's, that might be a good idea. I was going to ask you if you had any, uh, any content creator tips. You seem uh, to know what you're doing. I don't know, man. Well, we're in the we're in the blogs right now. We're all about the blog content and like getting people uh, You're killing it right blogs. Now. Yeah, blogs. So. so I'm saying there's like yeah. an article almost every day I'm reading. Once a week, we do a podcast a week and a blog a week. That's the goal. Nice. It, that's hard, man. Yeah, that's super solid. Dude, yeah, it's crazy. You preach to the choir. Yeah, I, yeah. I, and we don't do half that. So yeah, it's <laughs> that's yeah. actually true. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. so I I think it's uh, I think it's wonderful um, that. Cool. Uh, there's so many good things going on. I think next time we have you on a show, you're going to be a father. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Uh, Unless you're coming on next week. Yeah, yeah it sounds imminent. Week, yeah, imminent. I mean, the, the baby could come anytime now. Oh, I what? see. Nice. Yeah, that's super rad. I'm. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty excited for you, my, my friend. You. Well, yeah. and thank you guys for your support. Thanks for like always like you know. Put, putting the float house word out there name out there talking good about it really appreciate well, all that support and then the pleasure um, is all yeah. ours i absolutely uh, assure you we're just cool. so happy to be involved and, and just be a part of things awesome and, and to all you listening thanks for listening to uh to this show and like you know supporting these local productions i think it's such a cool thing like to tap into something that's very just real and and grassroots and organic and like fucking there's nothing else here about other than like jamie and cmart doing their thing and just it's it's cool and so kudos to you to tap it into something legit and original thanks brother that's very kind of you yeah thanks man yeah we're trying our best to document 
the travels and wonderful <laughs> events of the world. And uh, I think it uh, sometimes comes down to a little bit of comedy and just trying our best. That's totally. what it goes down to. Uh, Mike Saramba, you're the absolute yep. best, dude. Uh, I'm if, okay. If you, if you need anything, <laughs> solid you can give six. me a shout. Out of so, six. Yeah, solid <laughs> six. Out of six. Yeah, oh, that's good. Like yeah, that. there you go. People always have their jaw drop the first when Seymour <laughs> throws that out. It's like, yeah, I give you six. Man, if I was single, that's a great line. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a money, man. That is yeah. awesome. Because you nag them, I guess, at first. And then <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Like, you're actually funny yeah. and cute, yeah. and I like you. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a good man. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you're so inclined, please watch uh, the show. You can watch past episodes at intergalacticinterviews.com. You can also search us on iTunes and YouTube and Stitcher. Please subscribe if you like it. SoundCloud. Leave us a review or comment. We appreciate it. SoundCloud is dying, but we're still attached to it. And uh, <laughs> that's, I don't know why. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, we love you so much. Thank you very much for watching and sticking with us each week. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's show. Make sure you check out Vancouver Real. Excellent, excellent podcast. We definitely recommend it. And we'll see you all next week. Have a good night. Good, good day. Or good whenever. Whatever time. <laughs>